Hello, this is the Bluther Star 4 Grand Piano, made in 1935. That's 150 centimetres long, and it uh, was fully restored by Bluthners in 1972 and sold by them. It has a very good matching piano stool to go with it, with a nice leather top. Now, I think it has a walnut case. If you're in the trade and like to confirm that, that would be very helpful. Um, and it's immaculate. Um, it's typical Bluthners sort of satin finish, but very nicely done and very beautiful colour too. So it's going to go around the whole piano and uh, we can see it's got a very tasteful veneer, quite subtle and same colour all throughout. So it's been kept out of um, l the window because very often pianos fade on one side, um, as you'll see from others that we've had in stock before. But this one is literally the same colour throughout. So it's very, very good. Um, very well, well, very well kept. And the other thing you often get is on the top lid, you find as you turn, oh, turn it over, it's darker on that side. But this is exactly the same colour, so uh, it's been extremely well looked after. Just going round the rest of the piano, you, you can see it is is perfect and uh, doesn't have too much reflection, which means you can see the grain. And there's the music stand. Let's just lift the lid up again on the keys. So everything's exactly the same colour. These key tops are ivory and one piece. They're slightly yellow, but we're going to buff them. And also the sharps are slightly worn as well. It's been played a reasonable amount since it was redone. So that's a, a work that we'll be doing. When we buff them, the, the yellowing will also go, be slightly less. There's still be a slight ye yellow look to it, but that is not a problem for ivory. Now, it's Tuning pin tightness is really important, as we mentioned many times before, and it has had a new rest plank when it was restored. This is typical of Blutners. Now I've taken the screws out here because it's easy to view the rest plank to verify that. So there's the rest plank, and uh, seem to have it, it's a very well made rest plank. I think that's beech on the top. I've been consulting with a colleague who used to work with Blutners restoration department uh, about this piano. And so that's a laminate there, and certainly a very high quality rest plank. Though nowadays they put delignate rest planks in, which are multi layered. I'm not really sure that makes a huge difference. They're both good rest planks. By the way, as with the, all of these style, they're the normal, normal roller action and uh, cap and normal set off buttons here. Here's an older Blutner. So this style, the patent action blue and very very different as we've shown on other videos and made up until about 1925. All the felts have been replaced when it was uh, restored and uh, it's worth checking because sometimes even with restored pianos you get moth-eaten uh, felt so that's quite very important to look at. Now the piano has been played quite a lot since 1972 but there's still plenty of hammer left and I've done a test refacing on uh, some here you can see that really not that much hammer gone, so refaced, it's almost the same as it was before. This is just roughly refaced, actually. Now the refaced hammer has a bit more brightness. This is the before, and there's afterwards. So as you more hits the string more cleanly, less area of hammer hitting the string, and also a slightly harder felt. Now this one I refaced as well, and I'm there's an error in refacing though, I just want to show you. Now when you reface, there's this one here, um, it's got to be every, this, it's got to hit all three strings exactly the same time. You might be able to see there is a very slight slope in the right hand one there. So if you block off the left hand string and play quietly, sorry, block off the right hand strings and just listen to the left. And the right hand one played with the same pressure not really sounding, I had to play louder, harder. So when trying to play all three strings, it's not hitting the right hand one as hard as it's hitting the others. And you probably can't tell on the video, but there's a slight difference in tone as a result. That's purer. And that isn't, a slight noise on it. Now I've evened it up and it's got a fuller sound. Apart from refacing it needs quite a lot of regulation. That's uh, B and as I lift, take the back check off it's going up very slightly. It is going up but it needs to be stronger. That's C and I've regulated that. 
so it goes up more more positively in C sharp, whereas this one is not going up so positively, and that affects the, the feel. If you do that in all 88 keys, you definitely notice it. And the set off button, we've uh, maximized that to the drop screw. I've mentioned this in other videos too. General regulation of the piano, and uh, something important I meant to point out. Uh, somebody's decided to uh, lubricate here with graphite lubricant, I think, in solution, uh, which isn't what we'd normally do. It might be effective, but it tends to get clogged up if you do that. So, in fact, if you look at the keys, we've mentioned this on other videos, that uh, they are not. They should just drop straight back down. I'll see if I can get any of them to do that. Uh, that, that one, no, that one there is dropping down. But, sorry, that one there is dropping down, and more or less, whereas these ones, when you lift them up, they won't drop down. So, uh, that's causing it to bind in the middle, and that's causing the touch to be heavier on some and uh, uh, I, I think also it's not been been standing around for a while without being used much so uh, I'm not sure whether we're going to need to work on this at all to it might be binding on the sides but certainly the keys the key center is generally binding so we need to lubricate that and the workshop they lubricate with talc I've got a Teflon powder here it's very similar really um, both are used in the trade. Now, apart from the keys, I meant to show you this other cosmetic defect where it's been resprayed, and you can see slightly there's some cr little cracks opened up in the in the paintwork, which is very very common and uh, very commonly found. So obviously, unless we redo the whole piano, we wouldn't be able to disguise those. But there shouldn't be a problem with those. We're certainly guaranteeing the piano for five years. I would say over a 20-year period that won't get worse. Uh, the sample's a bit dirty, obviously, we're going to clean that. Um, but otherwise, everything's perfect, and the, you can see the new strings, which are a good, stri good string length. We've talked about that before, that string makers like to have a, a very even string length. That's the kind of pride, pride and joy to do that. And uh, new felts, of course. The boosters are renowned for their very mellow tone. Just to get an idea of how mellow it is, we'll compare it to some other pianos. This is the mid-treble. <laughs> It's the same length Steinway Essex. A restored Bersendorf for 170, a bit longer. A six foot Yamaha. Five foot ten Feuerich. And the top treble. And the Essex, I'll be putting some links, jump links at the bottom so you can go from one to the other. Bersendorfer. Yamaha. Feurig. Luther the Tenor. Essex. Bersendorfer, Yamaha, Feurig, Loose the Bass, Essex, Bersendorfer, Yamaha, And Feurig. So that's the Bluthner Star 4 Grand Piano, 150 centimetres long, made in 1935. And just come into stock, just looking at it to see what sort of work might improve it. And it's mainly regulation, it's been reasonably well used, but there's plenty of hammer left. Very mellow sounding as Bluthner's tend to be. Now it was reconditioned, or rather fully restored, in 1972 by Bluton themselves. A very inspiring piano to play. If you're interested to find out more, please do email us, info at robertspianos.com, or you can phone us and uh, 
we can do a video call in front of the piano if you'd like to find out more. Thank you very much for listening.